Hey guys, welcome back to Unstop Biology. So today we are going to start off with angiosperms. I hope you have gone through the previous videos wherein we have covered class 11th NCRT chapter 1, chapter 2 and we are at chapter 3. Now in chapter 3 as well we have covered the entire plant kingdom apart from angiosperms, right? So let's start with angiosperms today. Uh, like here in angiosperms, unlike the gymnosperms where we saw that the ovules are naked, here they have pollen grains and ovules are developed in specialized structured which are known as flowers, right? So basically angiosperms are also known as flowering plant. right and pollen grains are there and ovules are developed in specialized structure called flowers okay now in angiosperms the seeds basically the seeds are enclosed by fruits okay and angiosperms are considered as an exceptionally large group of plants which occur in wide range of habitats okay so they occur in wide range of habitat now if we come to the size of these plants they basically can be very tiny or microscopic as in the case of wolfia or they can also be very tall like the eucalyptus tree which is of around 100 meters in height okay now they provide us with a lot of things right so they are very very helpful to human beings so they provide us with food fodder fuel medicine and several commercially important products right now these angiosperms are divided into two classes now what are these classes so these are dicotyledons and monocotyledons so basically when these germinate they form cotyledons so either they form two cotyledons in their seed or they form one cotyledon in their seed okay now let's come to fertilization so what we have seen is that the male sex organ in the flower is known as the stamen and each of these stamen consists of a slender filament and anther okay so first thing is male sex organ now male sex organ is what stamen and each of these stamen so there are multiple stamen and each of this stamen has a slender filament something like this okay so there is a slender filament and then they have anther at the tip okay now anther after meiosis produces pollen grains now these pollen grains basically helps in transfer of the male gamete now the female sex organ is basically pistil or carpal like male sex organ is stamen female sex organ is pistil or carpal now again this pistil consists of ovary right enclosing one to many ovules and within these ovules we have the highly reduced female gametophytes so within ovules basically we have highly reduced female gametophyte which are known as embryo sac these are known as embryo sac okay now this embryo sac formation is preceded by meiosis okay and each of this embryo sac is what haploid these are haploid right and each embryo sac has a three-celled egg apparatus. So what does it has? It has three-celled egg apparatus which has one egg cell, two synergids, three antipodal cells and two polar nuclei. So each of this has its own function. So there is one egg cell, there are two synergids, three antipodal cells and two polar nuclei right now these polar nuclei basically fuse to form diploid secondary nucleus so these polar nuclei what does they do they ultimately fuse to form diploid secondary nucleus right so how does this fertilization happen basically so i cleared the screen 
so now what happens is pollen grains they get dispersed from anthers and they are carried out to the stigma or pistil which is the female sex organ and how are they carried out basically through they get uh, carried out through maybe wind or some other organisms like bees right and this process of carrying of anther is known as pollination okay so after pollination what happens is the pollen grain germinate to stage to form stigma right so these pollen grain germinate on stigma and through the tissues of stigma and style they reach the ovule okay so after they reach ovule what happens is they enter the embryo sac where two male gametes so they have two male gametes which are discharged okay now one of the male gamete fuses with the egg cell to form zygote it is known as syngamy and the other male gamete fuses with diploid secondary nucleus and it forms triploid primary endosperm nucleus which is known as pen okay now because of involvement of two fusion so there is involvement of two fusion this event is also known as double fertilization so guys again the entire process of reproduction in uh, angiosperms is very important so remember all these terms now these so what happens is they form a zygote which develops into embryo and this embryo again can develop one or two cotyledon depending upon whether the plant is going to be a monocot or a dicot and this pen the primary endosperm nucleus that develops into endosperm which provides nourishment to the embryo right now the synergids and antipodal so there are two other cells right synergids and antipodals so these degenerate after fertilization and ovule de develops into seed and ovaries develop into the fruit right so let's see the life cycle of an angiosperm once so basically this is the life cycle of the angiosperm right so here as you can see that there are multiple things right so here you can see that the life cycle starts off with a flower right so here is the flower so what happens this flower has the female organ and the male organ so here you can see its filament anther ovary style and stigma right and what happens is the male sex organ forms microsporangium which by meiosis forms microspore and basically that forms the pollen grain right and in the similar way the female sex organ forms megaspore mother cell which forms the egg now what happens is through pollination this this uh, pollen grain lands on the stigma uh, and then it forms the pollen tube wherein you can see there are two ma male gametes now this enters inside the egg and the zygote is formed now this zygote starts dividing and forms the embryo and that again forms the flower right so i hope you understood the complete life cycle of the angiosperm right so basically this is the life cycle of the angiosperm now with this we basically finish uh, the angiosperm as per the ncert syllabus we will also be dealing with that in detail but when we will be following any other book right so let's go to the very last topic of this chapter plant kingdom which is plants life cycle and what we call it as alternation of generation so as you would have seen we have heard a lot about the alternation of generation wherein we have various times studied haploid and diploid cells gametophytic and sporophytic phase right so what exactly is this gametophytic and sporophytic phase what does it mean by alternation of generations right so there are basically two cycles Uh, two parts of a cycle rather i would say which one of which is a haplontic and the other one is diplontic so basically what exactly it is so in plants what we see that both haploid and diploid cells they can divide by mitosis right now this ability leads to the formation of different plant body 
right so because of this plant has different plant bodies one is haploid and the other one is diploid okay so the haploid phase produces gametes by mitosis and this plant body represents a gametophyte so here mitosis occurs and it forms a haploid body which is known as gametophyte okay and then following fertilization the zygote divides by mitosis to produce diploid sporophytic so basically after this fertilization happens and it forms the diploid plant body which is nothing but the sporophyte right so this is the sporophytic plant body now haploid spores are, are again produced by this plant body by meiosis and that again divides by mitosis to form haploid plant body right so you can see that that this is kind of a cycle basically so during this life cycle of any sexually reproducing plant there is an alternation of generation between the gam the gametophyte as in the gamete producing haploid gametophyte and spore producing diploid gametophyte right so the gamete produces haploid gametophyte and spore produces diploid sporophyte right so different plants let me just clear this once what happens is different plant groups are divided based on the pro this pattern so we have seen that in some plants we say that uh, the sporophytic phase is dominant and in in, in some uh, group of plants we say that gametophytic uh, phase is uh, dominant or prominent right so base what exactly is that so the first point b sporophytic generation is represented by one celled zygote right so the sporophytic generation is one celled zygote right and there are no free living sporophytes so what happens is basically meiosis in the zygote results in the formation of haploid spores so meiosis because of meiosis in the zygote it forms haploid spores now these haploid spores divide mitotically and form the gametophyte right now the dominant photosynthetic phase in such plants is what the gametophytic phase so the dominant phase is gametophytic phase right and this kind of life cycle is known as haplontic life cycle so basically the first phase that we are going to study is haplontic life cycle which is the gametophytic phase right now many algae such as volvox spirogyra and some species of chlamydomonas represent this pattern okay now we'll see the structure as well in the form of a flow chart uh, sort of structure so here as you can see that the sporophytic phase so this is the sporophytic phase this is the diplontic phase is very small but the haplontic phase where in the gametophyte is formed and gametogenesis occurs after the spores are released is dominant one in the cycle right now the second phase that we are going to talk about is the diplontic life cycle so what happens there is the diploid sporophyte is the dominant photosynthetic independent phase of the plant here now gametophytic phase represented by is represented by single to few celled haploid gametophyte and this is termed as diplontic so here the sporophytic phase phase it dom is dominant right and all the seed bearing plants remember guys all the seed bearing plants that is gymnosperm and angiosperm follow this pattern right 
so all the seed bearing plants follow a diplontic life cycle and what happens here so here you can see it's the exact opposite of the previous phase wherein diplontic life cycle is the dominant one wherein you can see that after zygote zing syngamy happens that is uh, fertilization happens forms the zygote and then the sporophytic phase takes time and then it produces gametes and then through gametes gametogenesis happens then through meiosis there are again spores so spores formed which forms sporophyte right so this is the diplontic life cycle now the third and the last one is a mixture of both you can say which is the haplodiplontic life cycle now what happens there so basically in bryophytes and pteridophytes what happens is there is an exhibit what and what kind of exhibit an intermediate condition where both phases are multicellular so there both phases are multicellular right so a dominant independent photosynthetic thalloid or thallus and erect phase which is nothing but haploid gametophyte and then it alternates with a short lived multicellular sporophyte which is totally or partially dependent on gametophytic phase for its anchorage and nutrition so what we saw when we saw the structure of bryophytes and pteridophytes that there are is a sporophytic phase above and below there is a gametophytic phase as well right if you remember there were leaves uh, so it it was something like there was some rhizoid rhizoid then we had some leaves and from this there was food seed a capsule right so this was nothing but the sporophytic phase and this was the gametophytic phase right so all bryophytes represent this pattern remember all bryophytes represent this pattern and diploid sporophyte is represented by a dominant independent photosynthetic vascular plant body remember these terms please so diploid sporophyte is represented by dominant independent photosynthetic vascular plant body and it alternates with multicellular sporophyte autotrophic independent but short lived haploid gametophyte right so this is haplodiplontic life cycle and all pteridophytes exhibit this pattern so remember in in bryophytes what happens is the gametophytic phase is the dominant one but also it has multicellular sporophytic phase and it's the opposite in pteridophytes wherein the dominant one is diploid sporophytic phase but then again it alternates with multicellular haploid gametophytic phase right so how this happens here is they almost have an equal life cycle right so here you can see that they it the gametogenesis happens it for it forms gametes which basically does nothing but fertilizes forms zygote which forms sporophyte which by meiosis forms spores and as soon as form is to form spores it gets migrated through water currents in most of the times and then it forms gametophyte and then gametogenesis occurs again right so here you can see that seeds almost half uh, haploid or half uh, gametophyte and half diploid or half sporophytic phase right so with this we end the chapter 3 which is plant kingdom and from the next chapter we are going to start with the animal kingdom i hope you understood this chapter very well if not it's high time you come back with all the questions you can either mention it in the comment section of the video or else you can also message on the whatsapp number which is given in the description of this video right and if you understood the chapter very well i am thinking of preparing a quiz as well for all you guys so please be ready for that and if you understood this video please like it share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to this uh, channel because i'll be posting 
a lot of videos on a regular basis and i want you to be updated with that right and if you want any kind of assistance with respect to study material for your preparation please do visit my website www.onestopbiology.com okay thank you for watching this video thank you so much bye bye guys